Hello everyone, welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. I'm Bonnie Krebs and I have a really fun tutorial for you this week. Uh, we're gonna do a Christmas one and uh, it's a little cabin in the woods, in the snow, in the snow. So uh, get ready, you guys are gonna really love this project. I hope you give it a try. Here we go. So this week's project is a little cabin kind of tucked away uh, back into the fir trees. Um, I've also added a little border around the edge. Now uh, that's totally up to you. You could leave that off or you could take that border all the way around your image, which would also be really cute. So I opted for just half of a border this time and then my little cabin tucked back in the woods. So in order to create this, we are going to need a few things. So here they are. Uh, I started out with the basic scene and I really, um, I just think that this uh, makes everything so much easier, especially when you're doing a snowy area where you're not quite sure where the lines are. And this just kind of helps you um, see that um, see that area and sort of get your perspective. Now, here's what I used. I only used, you know, I didn't use any of these two lines up above here. I only used this little section uh, right here in the middle. And I'll show you that when we go to um, start our project. So I used the simple scene, the basic one. Uh, I also used one of the little rustic cabins. Now, any of these little structures are going to work as long as it's not a huge one. You know, this one uh, might be a little large uh, back in here. I mean, you could do it if you did a smaller border, but try to stick with something that's a little bit um, closer to this size. This one would have been cute too. So any little structure, a little church, little house, you can put any of those things back in the background. Uh, the tree set, uh, of course, I'm going to make my little fir trees in the back. Any of these three are going to work. I opted for this one. And then the little mini foliage set, the little tree, this one right here, I'm going to use that. And then in the branches set, um, a couple of them. So this one right here, this is going to uh, create our little frame around the edge. So this one, and then this little branch right here for an accent. And then in the uh, foliage, Bible foliage set two, uh, this little cedar bough right here. We're gonna use that one. And then uh, in the Christmas wreath set. So I know you guys have been asking about pine cones, so we're gonna use one in this one. And um, let's see, is there anything else? Oh, the fir bough. We're gonna use one of these. So either of these are going to work. I just grabbed one, and you can choose both or one. Oh, and the little berries. We're gonna use those two, little berries. Okay, so we are using quite a few stamps, but the point of it is that these things are all made to work together and you can put together just the neatest combinations, so many options, so many different ways that these stamps will work together. And here's just one, here's just one way. So uh, I'm going to see if I can just keep this in the screen so that you can kind of you know follow me and see what I'm doing here. And let me see if I can still get uh, my scene in here and my palette. <laughs> I need to fit everything into the screen here. So uh, I'm going to, now you can see I've already stamped my image in here. And uh, here's my simple scene. You can see this little section right here. That's all I used of the simple scene. Let me show you that in comparison. So here's the actual stamp. Um, and you know, keep that in mind. You don't necessarily have to use the whole thing because it's a clear stamp and you can see exactly where it's going. You can just ink the parts that you want to use. Now I just needed part of this little pathway and I like this kind of mounded look here. Now this isn't just for snow. This one could be used for lots of different seasons, but especially for snow because it has these really nice rolling hills and they're just perfect for a snowy scene. So that's what I did. I just opted for this little section right here. You can see it, just this part. And then um, back behind here, I tucked in my little cabin. Now let me show you that one. So it doesn't have a bottom to it, but it does have the sides. And I wanted to look it to look like it's tucked back behind these little snow mounds here. So I just taped this off with some post-it tape. I just ran a post-it tape across here and here. And then I just stamp my little cottage um, back here in behind. And then it looks like the snow is kind of mounded up against the little cottage. So that's how I started. Now the circle is where the image is going to um, is going to stay. Now that's that's from our double um, stitch die set. And it is, let me tell you what size uh, this one is. This one is <clears throat> 
It is the, uh, looks like the two and three quarter. And then this one is uh, three and a half. So the two and three quarter and the three and a half inch. And I just, you know, I trace this circle, the inside of it. That's actually, you know, a pretty good size for what I'm doing in here. And then I traced this one um, on the outside of it. And that sort of gives me an area, you know, where I can see that this is kind of where my cut line is gonna be, is kind of right here. So I, I sort of wanna keep my, my little border in this vicinity. And it sort of gives me a little, a boundary so that I don't go, you know, off, too far off. And then I end up cutting uh, the whole watercolor um, border off. So we don't wanna do that. Okay, so let's get going here. We're gonna start out with the little cabin. And I, you can see here, I made it really rustic. Uh, and I also put the little lights in the window, which I absolutely love doing. So we're gonna start out just by pulling the color out of the lines. And I've got my number four brush. We're gonna start out with that. Uh, dip it in water and then pinch it off and start out, you know, under the eaves. That's always the safest place to start off because that's where there's going to be a shadow. And then over here on the side, we know that's going to be darker. And then here's the front. And this little, you know, lean to area back here, that kind of sets back a little bit. So we can make this a little bit darker too. And then, of course, inside the door. And then the rest of this is going to be snowy. So we don't want to add too much color to that. Okay, so let's add some color now to this little cottage. And I've got some warm brown. This is the uh, 947. And then I'm gonna add some of my dark brown also. This is the 969. And I'm going to kind of use those two. And then a little green for the door. So the 249. Oops, 249. That's really the go-to green uh, for this project. We're gonna be using that mostly. And then um, some blue, because we're gonna need to put some shadows in. So the 565, 565 blue. And we're not gonna worry too much about the roof because we're gonna add some white to it. You can see the white on the roof here and we're gonna just hang a few little icicles on here too. So we don't have to worry about this line in here or doing too much with the roof. We're gonna do that with our white paint. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just add a little brown to um, this little cottage or little, um, little shed, little lean-to. It's very a little rustic, a little rustic house, a little rustic cottage. So I've got a little of this color in here. I'm gonna just add a little more of this darker brown just to kind of mix up the color a little bit. And then, you know, over on this side, uh, I can add a little of this brown, but I'm gonna add some blue too. Cause this is gonna be really pretty dark over here. And then the door, I'm just gonna put a little green on the door. So just that cool green. And just kind of brush this in. Just like that. Now I'm gonna take my twin tone, my fine tip. Uh, so my twin tone, my brown, and I'm going to just kind of darken in uh, these little window treatments here. Just the bottoms of the window and also the top of the door. It's gonna be pretty dark up here. And then, you know, we, we're gonna be able to see back in here. So we can make that just a little bit darker. The chimney. That's gonna be pretty dark, especially on this side. Now we're gonna go in with the yellow. So here's, here's what we're gonna use for the windows. And you can see on this one, the window paints are brown. That's because uh, it's really rustic. And so I made the window paints brown. Um, normally I leave them white. Uh, just because it's on a cottage or a house, but this is a really rustic. So I wanted these to be brown, but you have to do that after the fact. So we're still gonna go in and do the window treatments just like we would put in the little yellow panes, uh, just like this. Just like that. And then we're gonna go back in now and we're going to uh, add the dark.
and back here as well. Okay, so now I'm going to take my tiny little brush and I'm gonna make some, um, some little details onto the front of this. So just some, you know, planks. Just kind of draw this in and make it look like these are really rustic uh, planks. Just like that, and I'm using my dark brown. Like so, and then I'm just gonna come under here and I'm just going to make a dark shadow under here. Over here too, where that overhang is. And then I'm gonna just come back in here with my, um, my number four and I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue to the front of this cottage and kind of smooth out these lines. And put just a little bit more on this side. And over here. Okay, so now I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue to this door. It's just, it's a little too bright uh, for this little rustic cabin. So I'm just gonna kind of tone it down a little bit. And then add a little brown to my chimney. A little bit more on this overhang. Starting to look more rustic, isn't it? Okay, so let's just do um, let's just do something else here on this little door. Uh, I'm going to take my um, my little twin tone, my brown, and just make a few little lines on this door, and put in the little door, the doorknob. And then I'm just gonna come underneath here with my twin tone and really darken this overhang. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, no, so let's continue on. We're going to um, add the sky in now behind it. So I'm gonna take some of this blue and I'm just gonna brush, kind of brush this in. Stay, kind of stay within my guidelines here. But I'm gonna brush in this night sky. I don't have to go down too far uh, because my trees are gonna kind of be in here. So I, I can just, you know, kind of stop about there. kind of depending on where you, you, you know, what you want in the background. If you want another snowy hill back there, you can, you can uh, leave that part white too. And I'm going to just make this sky just a little darker because I really want that snow to show, little snowflakes falling. And then with my brush, I'm just going to come along the side of this roof and just put in this little bank. Now we're gonna add the snow onto the roof onto this side with the white paint, but we can still put the little um, the little bank on here. You see how that just kind of lifts that lifts that snow up. Okay, so let's continue on here. And we're going to now, let's see, what should we do? Oh, let's let's do the little bank on the path here. So we're gonna see the snow on this side and this side. So we can kind of see the bank here. Now, when it comes around, this is the top of the mound, so we're not gonna see the bank there. We're only gonna see it on the front. Uh, 
And then, you know, just a little bit of color, you know, back in here also. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's put our trees in. So I'm not gonna use this, I don't need to use the trunk of the tree. So I'm just gonna use this part. And then I'll put another one in maybe right here. Maybe I'll stamp that one more time to make sure that's dark enough. And then uh, maybe I'll put another one here. And then I'm just gonna take off the bottom and I'm just gonna put the top in right above uh, my little cottage. Now, it doesn't matter that I've stamped over the roof because I'm gonna put my white paint on there and it's not gonna matter at all. Now let's put uh, one taller tree in the front, maybe right there. And then I'm gonna use my little trees and put, you know, one here and maybe one here. And you can put as many of these in, in as you want. Totally up to you. And you know what? They're going to be different every time. Look how different mine is from the one I did <laughs> previously. That's the cool thing about this. They really are one of a kind and very unique. Very unique little paintings. Even if you try, they just, they never look the same. So now I'm just adding the water to my little trees. And I can just keep coming down here like this because even though it's in the front and I've got a lot of color here, by the time I add my white paint, um, we're not gonna see that. Okay, so now let's continue on and let's do our little border. Let's continue on to our border. So we're gonna start out with that little branch, this one right here, and we're gonna ink it in two colors. So the brown and the green. So the same green, the 249 green. And I'm just gonna kind of turn my canvas a little bit so I can get a better, um, get a better view here. So I'm just going to go around, you know, twice and then, you know, one more time over on the top. And that should, that should do it. Let me move this out of the way now. Okay, so now we're going to add in uh, the pine cones. So these two little guys, we're going to put these in twice. And I'm just going to ink it with the brown, the 969, and the blue, the 565. So two colors. And you can put in as many of these also um, that you that you want. And I can just actually stamp it one more time here. And we don't really have to do anything with the branches right now. We can just kind of leave those alone. We're gonna add some more foliage to it, but let's go ahead and color um, the little pine cones first. So we're gonna start out, you see all these little pockets kind of down in down below in here? Uh, where the lines cross, that's where all the color is going to be. So you wanna keep that color down in there and then the tops of these little um, sections, you wanna leave those light. And just use a small brush and take your time. You know, we want these to look really realistic. And so we wanna see each little section. And that's kind of what we're doing too. We're doing each each section one at a time And I'm just going in here to each little section and pulling that color and see the highlight on there. I want to see that highlight um, at the top of each of these little areas. And down here, you know, where all these little points are, that's where it's the darkest. So now I'm going to take my twin tone and I'm going to really reinforce those little areas down below. Really make sure those are dark. You don't have to get all of them, but try to just get, you know, um, get a few so you can get that light to dark 
um, variation. Now, if you wanna make these pine cones a little smaller, you can just ink maybe two thirds and just continue your, um, your little line across the bottom. And then I'm just gonna take my little pen and just kind of attach these to my branch. Now I'm gonna take a little of that warm brown from my palette. So this, this little warm brown with my small brush and I'm gonna add a little of this color to it. Just kind of dab it on. Make sure you leave some of those white spaces still. So you're not coloring in everything. And your brush, you know, when it kind of hits those pockets, you know, where you added that darker color with the twin tone, it will kind of activate that color too. And let that color kind of bleed out a little bit. Always, you know, concentrate on keeping the color, you know, at the bottom, at the bottom in the little cracks. And, and that sort of gives you the impression that things go back. You know, that these little things are kind of attached on the inside. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of blue, of this dark blue, and I'm going to the bottom, the bottoms of the pine cone. So the bottom down here would be down here. And I'm just going to brush that, brush a little bit of blue on there. On this one, it's going to be down here. Just, just brush right over the top. Okay, there we go. So now let's continue on here. And uh, I'm going to add some foliage. So we're going to start out with this little... Um, with a little branch here. And I'm gonna ink that in the dark green, the same dark green, the 249. And think of, you know, of it kind of as an extension uh, with the branches. I'm kind of just, you know, extending it out here. And, you know, it's okay to stamp it on the, you know, over the blue. That's totally fine. Like so, and maybe I'll just kind of bring this down like this. And let's add some of this little foliage in here. I'm gonna change out the green. So I'm gonna to switch to the 177 and use this one. And just, you know, as much as you want to put in here. Just, you know. And sometimes, you know, at the end, you know, once you finish this whole thing, uh, you might decide to just add another, you know, little bit somewhere. And you can do that. All right, so now we're going to add some water. And I'm gonna I'm gonna use my little brush uh, because I don't want to you know lose the the shape of these little fur boughs. So I'm gonna just kind of add water like this, and this one too, just a little tiny bit. And just kind of you know bring this color down. Don't get too much water on here. Uh, if you get too much water, you know, it'll just, you'll just kind of lose your, lose your image. And you know, if it looks like a big blob, um, then you've got, to, you've just got too much water. But that's, you know, that's really an easy fix. Just next time, pinch your brush off a little more.
and problem solved. Okay, so let's continue here. I'm gonna add my little berries in, these little guys. And I'm using uh, the 856 red. And you, you really kind of want to stamp these, you know, where it's where it's white. Uh, so you can really see that vibrant color. And maybe just one more down here. Uh, let's see, do I have room for a couple more? Maybe right there. Okay, so now I'm going to take my red twin tone and I'm going to darken these around the edges. I want them to be really dark and really vibrant. You can see I'm kind of leaving a, just a tiny little highlight in the center. And just kind of make your way around. You don't have to use, you know, you can, you can ink just a couple too. Okay, now I'm gonna take my brown twin tone and I'm gonna kind of attach these to my branch. So just, you know, think about, you're kind of bringing them together like this. So kind of in the center and everything's kind of attaching to that same branch. It doesn't, you know, doesn't really have to be perfect. And it really doesn't matter where you attach them on the branch. Like so, and then let's do this last one here. One, two, three, just kind of bring them all in so that they're attached at one point. Okay, that looks pretty good, you guys. So let's continue on here. Um, what do we need to do? I guess we're ready for the white paint. I think we've got everything else. Um, I'm just gonna put this line back in here of this little cottage. and put a few of these details back in. And it looks like I lost my window here. You can see on this one, <laughs> there's a little window on the side, but I think it's okay. You can change these up so many different ways. All right, so let's go, uh, let's go ahead now and get to our paint. So we're gonna do our white paint our ph martin's bleed proof white and we're going to do that next so let me get my brush out get my jar open and let's start out with our little painting here so i'm going to use my little tiny brush since i'm doing these little trees and i'm going to dip my brush into um, my paint and start out just by adding snow to my little trees in the background. This just changes everything up so much. I mean, of course, this is my favorite part. I absolutely love doing this um, because it absolutely brings the painting to life. It really does. And you know, it's so easy. It's, it's really stress-free because it really doesn't matter how you put this white on. Um, it's gonna look great because it's just a snowy tree. And you know, depending on how the limbs are, um, you know, the snow can just be however on there. And here's our tree that was in front of the little cabin. So we can just take care of that. adding our little our snow on here you know the branches kind of hang every which way so it it doesn't really matter how you put the snow on so now I'm gonna put just a little um, line of snow across the top and across here 
So we can get rid of that green area and get our snowy roof back on here. I'm gonna come down along the edge that create that little snowy edge and here and you can bring that snow up you know a little higher on the house too if you want to you can tuck the trees kind of behind a little hill um, just by adding your white paint put a little smoke coming out of the chimney and I'm gonna make just a little division here between these trees because it looks like one tree kind of blended into the other one so I'm just gonna cover up a little bit of these and make this way smaller These little ones are just they're just they just turn out so cute but the it's really important to have a small brush um, when you're doing these just do a little suction at a time um, it's so much fun Okay, now in order to do uh, the little icicles hanging off, you really need to have um, watered down your paint a little bit. And so I'm I'm just gonna you know dip my brush, not pinch it off too much, and just get a tiny little bit of this paint on here. And, you know, just a little bit. Okay, remember, you know, with watercolor, it's just the idea of things. Okay, let's put uh, a little snow in the sky. Now let's add some snow to our little wreath. So I'm gonna use my bigger brush now. And I'm gonna get my number four. And now I need a little more paint. So think about, you know, don't stress out about too much about putting the paint on here because um, think about, you know, the paint kind of landing on top of these branches. You know, it's just, you know, if they're kind of hanging down, the paint is just gonna kind of sit on top. And just kind of think about, you know, piles, piles of paint. We can, you know, put some over the little pine cones and put some over here, back over here. And just kind of think of it as, you know, mounds of 
amounts of paint. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna let that dry and I will be right back. Okay, I am back and my white paint is completely dry. I've also erased the outside line um, from my little image. So we're going to now dip, uh, dip my brush in water and I'm gonna take some of this blue, um, blue color and I'm just gonna kinda come underneath uh, this white paint and just put in a little shadow. Just a little bit of shadow to give it a little more dimension here. It's going to, you know, be darker on the bottom. So that's what we can do is kind of put that in. Okay, that looks good. Uh, I'm just gonna add another little detail in here. I'm gonna put in my little branch and I'm just gonna ink this uh, in the green and just kind of put, kind of put this in uh, just a little bit here and there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good, you guys. I think we are about finished. Um, there's not much left to do. You know, I always have to just go in here with my little twin tone and just touch up a few things. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of water to my little berries. to kind of bring out the color a little bit more with this really dark red. And I think we are good. Uh, one more thing, uh, one little detail that I did on mine, uh, my previous one was to take my, um, my green and use the bullet tip and I just kind of went around, you know, on my on my pencil line, just to kind of give it a little border. Because we've got, you know, all this white space down here, so we don't really don't have, um, we don't really, can't really see the border of our circle. And then maybe I'll just put a few little dots in here Just like that. Okay, I think that looks good. I'm gonna just erase now um, my line in here. Make sure this is dry before you erase, um, but fortunately it dries really quick. Okay, we are good to go and I think that's it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to do other than sign and date, you guys. Always sign and date. Oops, wrong end. And there we go, we are finished with our little project. Let me hold it up a little bit so you can see it. I hope you guys will give this one a try. Um, for that outdoor enthusiast person that's in your life, you might wanna make them something really special and this would be a great one to do. So I hope you enjoyed this project, give it a try and I'll see you all again next week. Thanks for watching.